Damon Martin MMA fighting here with uh, the newest superstar from BKFC. And I got to admit, I covered the fights on Friday or on Saturday, excuse me. And I think she had arguably the best performance on the entire card. Welcome in Pearl Gonzalez. Pearl, welcome in. How are you? Thank you so much for having me on. What an intro. I appreciate that. <laughs> uh, congratulations, of course, on an amazing win. Um, I got to be honest, I've covered BKFC since the beginning. And I always say, to everyone going into that sport, I say there's a learning curve. You know, you go in there. It's not easy to do bare knuckle fighting our first time. Uh, you look like a seasoned pro. I mean, I got to admit, that was one of the most impressive debuts I've ever seen in bare knuckle fighting. Wow. Thank you so much. I had a lot of fun. Um, you know, the biggest thing for me was to just go in there and make sure I felt at home. Um, and, and I did. I felt at home that night. And, and it, was, it showed off. So I'm very grateful for the performance. Absolutely. You know, covering your mixed martial arts career, I mean, obviously you've been a well-rounded fighter, but I know so much of your grappling background. You know, you've been such a mm -hmm. tremendous grappler. And when I saw you sign with BKFC, I was like, this is interesting because not that not that you haven't you know, been a striker before, but I've always you know, thought of your grappling, thought of your grappling background. Uh, was this something like in terms of like kind of just give me a sense like how this whole how this whole thing came about? You know, it was uh, it's interesting how it kind of it all unfolded. Um, I was in talks with bare knuckle and in the winter time, um, after my, my fight had failed with Invicta, my, I had a title fight that, uh, I got really, really sick with COVID and was unable to fight. And then we weren't quite sure when the next card was going to be. So just, I, I had been training and preparing for a fight since August, um, and ready to fight since August. And so it was a, it was just in a, in a rock and a hard place of where to go. Um, and bare knuckle had come up then and, um, I had thought about it, you know, I've always loved boxing. I've always, I've at heart, it's been, there's just been one art that I've really loved and I've never really had the opportunity to, to study and work. Um, and the type of mixed martial artist that I am is I, I like to take different parts of arts. I've gone to Thailand. I've spent three months in Thailand. Um, I, I've spent a lot of time in my grappling uh, wrestling and, and just the different arts. And I'd like to take them apart and spend a little time in each and every one. And so I just, you know, I kept thinking about it. I talked to my team, my management, and it just, it really seemed to make sense to, to go ahead and try. And, and it gave me the opportunity to, to come out and train with Amanda Serrano. I had called her and asked her if I could train with her. And I had come out uh, here to Brooklyn for a week. And it was just to come train and, and start preparing for my, uh, my, my debut in Bare Knuckle. Um, and this was back in February. And so I came out, I absolutely loved it. Uh, my, my, uh, lease was ending in San Diego and I had been in San Diego. I, I've been living in San Diego for the last six years and predominantly because of my gym. It was the only real reason why I was there. I don't have family in San Diego. Um, and I was there training with 10th planet San Diego. I've been studying the 10th planet system for the last few years. And, um, so my lease was up and I was just like, you know what? I really, I had the, the best experience ever with the Serrano team here. They treated me so well. The training was insane i had never been hit as hard as i was by amanda by amanda <laughs> when i got hit by her and so i had asked them i was like hey do you guys mind if i move out there and i train with you i wanted to take if, if i was going to sign something to sign with an organization like bare knuckle i needed to take my boxing very seriously um and so i asked them and they were like you're weird but absolutely <laughs> and ten, 10 days later i packed all of my stuff up i shipped all my stuff across the country and here i am living in brooklyn now that's crazy. Yeah, it's funny because I saw you obviously pay a lot of credit to Amanda Serrano on Saturday night after your win. And obviously, we all know her resume. She's an incredible boxer uh, and, and you know, up and coming mixed martial artist as well. Uh, yes. It seemed like I mean, I don't know. You tell me, but like how much how much did that add to your game in terms of boxing? Uh, because, again, that's still kind of a short window period of time. It's not like you've been there for two mm -hmm. years working. But, man, again, it looked like you were as sharp as you've ever been uh, in that fight. Yes. yes. You know, I think that living here is, is just such a different experience for me because. One, not only is the training amazing and incredible, and I work with her and her sister. Her sister is also a world champion, Cindy. Um, and so I have to spar these girls every, every, we were sparring every other day for this fight. I sparred, I, I put in so many rounds. And every single time I step inside of the, the ring with them, I'm like scared for my life because they hit so hard. They're so talented. They're so far ahead in boxing than I am. Um, and so it's, it's just like a in, very intense moment for me. And I have to, 
I have to like put my pieces together and make sure that I'm on point. But it's also like living here and being trained by Jordan and, and them. It, 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 I'm around a world champion family and they train every single day. There, there's no nonsense here. It, it, you know, they focus when, when time is off, we go, we went out to dinner yesterday as a family. Um, and then I'm home and I'm, I'm just alone right now. And I don't have family here. I don't have friends here. I'm not hanging out. I'm, I'm really focused on my skills on recovering when I'm not training and just really owning and, and learning and living a, a champion champion lifestyle. And I'm loving it. And, and, um, it's been a very peaceful time and transition for me, uh, to, to be out here and, and to really just be focusing on the skills and then focusing on myself. And so I think it really showed, I think that all of that was a culmination of the performance on Saturday night is the change in my lifestyle, the change in my life, um, the people that I'm now surrounded around as well as the training. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I said at the start of the interview, Pearl, that, you know, generally when I talk to people before their bare knuckle, bare knuckle debut, they have an idea of what it's going to be like. And then afterwards, it's usually a little different. Uh, I, you know, I remember talking to Polly Malignaggi before he had his bare knuckle debut against Artem Lobov. And he, you know, again, obviously some of it's trash talk, but obviously he was pretty, you know, pretty discounted Artem's skill set in terms of what he could do. And he obviously he was a boxing champion. So, of course, he thought he was going to do very well. And I've talked to a lot of mixed martial artists going in saying, oh, yeah, you know, I know what it is. I'll be fine. But you can't really train bare knuckle. You're not in there with Amanda Serrano with no gloves on, just punching each other bare knuckle. So you don't really know exactly what it's like until you get in there. Uh, and there's this giant learning curve. I mean, if you look at even uh, Paige Van Zandt, you know, she had a, kind of a rough go the first four rounds. She finally started to settle in late in her fight with Britton Hart. But you can see the nerves, the getting hit with a bare knuckle the first time is a whole different animal. Um I was, and I and I say this without trying to offend you, I was shocked at how easily you went into it because generally speaking, <laughs> I always think, okay, we're going to see a couple rounds of like nervousness, a couple rounds of like getting used to this. Uh, you came out of the, the, you came out of the gate just firing and, and like going to take her head off. And I was like, geez, like is Pearl like secretly having bare knuckle fights on the weekends we don't know about? Like what's going on here? You know, I'm from Chicago. I'm from the hood and growing up, I love to fight. My dad put me in mixed martial arts at 11 years old. And one, it, it was very helpful because it helped me with, with the tough upbringing that I had. And, and it was an outlet for me. But the other thing it did is it taught me to fight when I was upset. When That was just how I solved my problems. I didn't let anybody pick on me. I didn't let anybody pick on my friends or, or other people or their teachers. And so I was always fighting. I've been fighting my whole life. I've been fighting in the streets before, you know, even during my, my mixed martial arts career. So I, I had that to, to, to go off of, of, I know what it feels like to hit, but it was still a very, very crazy moment to be in there and like to hit because there was only, I only landed, I think like one solid shot that I feel like. Um, and that was in the first round when I kind of sat her down a little bit the rest of the shots, it's like one knuckle here lands on a bone and then you throw this and one knuckle lands there. And like, you really felt that. And so it was, it was, it was definitely a, a learning curve for me. I, I may not have shown it, but it was, and it was intense. And I mean, right now my hands are good, but they were so swollen after that fight, they were red and swollen and like, I'm bruising all the way down here into my wrist and my arms. Now it's moving, but they were, I had balls on top of my, so it was very, very different. Um, I, I couldn't move my hands after after the fight. I, they're getting better. I've been working really hard on getting the swelling out. But it it was intense. And like you don't you don't when you have a padded glove on, you can still you can hit and land one knuckle, and then the rest of your fist will kind of come into that shot. In bare knuckle, when you hit with if it's just one knuckle, that one knuckle is all that's hitting. And and so. It is. It's very different. I, I learned so much in that fight and I may not have shown it, but I was like, oh, oh, my God, because, you know, it was like these big, they, they were real shots that weren't landing as clean as they would with the glove on. Yeah. And, and for anyone that wasn't aware, your opponent, you know, we just saw her back in February. I mean, she had a freaking war, probably you know, the fight of the mm -hmm. night. Absolute battle. And 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 that was a, you know, that was a back and forth war. I mean, that was an absolute bloody back and forth war. Uh, you picked her apart. I mean, we saw she had the giant hematoma growing. She had the busted up face. I mean, again, I know you said you only felt like you landed a couple really good shots, but she was pretty busted up at the end. And obviously, 
uh, when I wrote the recap of the fight, I said that was a pretty lopsided performance. It was a shutout. I mean, every round was you. She never – did she even really connect on a punch with you? Like, I don't really remember her even landing, like, a really solid shot on you the entire fight. Um, She did land – she landed one good right hand in the second or third round, I believe, and I got, like, a little bruise on my lip now. And then she landed a good shot on my shoulder. I have knuckle bruises here. <laughs> um, but no, she, you know, that was my goal. in this fight was to work my ones and twos. It was very simple, very basic, the game plan. Of course, I wanted to showcase more and step in and, and do more. But they really wanted me to work my range and my distance and just throw ones and twos. And so she didn't have the opportunity. I didn't allow for her to get past my range very often. Um, and so she did, she had a hard time and she was trying to sit really low on me. And that just, that took away her range for her. And so it was, it was, a, unfortunately it was a rough night for her. She was unable to find any targets to land. Yeah. So now you've obviously had your official introduction into bare knuckle and, and we've seen, and I've talked to Dave Feldman about this, you know, growing the women's division, obviously you're here now. I mentioned, of course, Paige Van Zandt. She's got a fight coming up against Rachel Ostevich. Uh, Britton Hart is also on that card against Jenny Savage. So they actually have been building and, and really growing uh, the women's division in BKFC. So now that you've had your first fight, uh, and I'm sure maybe you saw the, the story the other day, Beck Rawlings then talked to come back as well. So they're really growing this division. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of give me a sense of like where you see yourself fitting in now, especially after that kind of debut, because I feel like you just kind of sent notice to everybody in the women's division that there's a new, there's a new contender here. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't know where, where I sit. I just know that I'm back in the gym. I went back to training yesterday. Obviously I can't hit anything, but I'm already back to my shadow boxing. I'm, I'm back to sprints and, and just getting back to work. Um, I'm, I'm eager to grow. I'm eager to compete right now and test myself and challenge myself. So whatever is next, I'm prepared for, um, you, we'll see how this plays out next month between the page and the Rachel fight and see where, where that goes. But I'm here and I'm, I, I'm not just a, a, a fighter. I come out, you saw my performance, you saw my, my walkout, you saw my outfits. Like I love to perform being under these lights and, and competing is, is where I thrive. And so whatever is next, whatever the, the next opportunity that makes sense, I'm game for, I, I want to be tested. I, I want to challenge myself. And, and I also obviously want to compete and be the best. Is there any part of you that, you know, again, I don't know, because, again, uh, we haven't had a champion crown there since Beck left. Now, again, I said that there's talks going on with Beck coming back, so that could be a, a great fight for you. But, obviously, the Paige-Rachel uh, winner would also seem like a natural fit, only because, obviously, you're a big name. Again, you know, the winner of that's going to be a big name. We can't deny, you know, the, the, the name value there. But, obviously, like a Britain Hart you know, has a win over Paige Van Zandt. Obviously, she's more experienced. Uh, if she beats Jenny Savage, that could be an, a natural fit for maybe a title fight. So do you have an idea? Like if you had your choice, like is there one better than the other or do you care? You know, I I'd like to fight them all. Honestly, um, that's what I'm here for. And whatever fight makes sense. Yeah. The girls, uh, Paige and Rachel, they have big names and, and those are great fights for me. Um, you know, I, I, I want to, again, I'm a performer. So, and Britt is, is great too. She did a good job against Paige. I'm here. I'm here for any of those girls. I'm ready for them. Uh, and I'm ready to compete. So again, I, like I said, in my post fight, I'm getting better every single day. That's my goal. That's my sole focus. I am 100% locked in, in, in boxing and, and testing and pr improving my skills every day. I train with the best in the world. Um, and I'm going to go out there and go against any of these girls here. So now I've had conversations, as I said, with Dave Feldman and other fighters in BKFC and financially, I've heard that, you know, fighters are very happy in BKFC. You know, you can go and be a BKFC fighter now and, and, and make a living at it, which is awesome to hear. We need more of that in this sport. We need more options for fighters. But what would you say is your future in terms of your fight career? I mean, obviously you are with BKFC now, but I assume the door is not closed to MMA or grappling or whatever. So kind of give me a sense, like if you're looking ahead to like the rest of this year and then moving into 2022, like do you have goals in mind in terms of, you know, switching back and forth? Uh, sticking just straight bare knuckle like what what are what are your goals right now well you know I think that right now I'm 100% committed to boxing um, and this is my sole focus and so I am I would love to have a professional boxing debut as well um, I'm here to focus on it and, and and a professional boxing debut only helps my bare knuckle fighting as well so right now my sole focus is boxing um, we'll see what happens at towards the end of the year 
obviously my heart has always been with grappling and I love mixed martial art. It, it really is where my passion is. But right now I've taken this time. I, I've committed to focusing on boxing and my hands and my striking skills. And that's what I want to focus on for the time being. Um, but I do foresee me eventually going back to mixed martial arts. Absolutely. Right now, though, boxing's where it's at for me. I'm, I'm really excited to, to be here to learn. And I'm, I'm a brand new at boxing. I mean, maybe it didn't, I didn't seem like that, but I am, I'm, I'm a novice in this. And, and I love that feeling that I, ha I have so much to learn every single day. Yeah, absolutely. And to that point, you know, you fought in the UFC, you fought in Invicta. I can't say enough good things about Shannon Knapp. You know, she's amazing. But how was the experience working with BKFC, working with Dave Feldman, working with the organization? Because I've talked to a lot of fighters there and they all seem to have a pretty positive experience. It was a great experience. And, and you're right. They do. They do. They do pay very well. I'm very happy with the, the compensation um, and where I'm at. I, I believe that they've they have paid me more than I've been paid in my mixed martial arts career. Um, and so the experience overall was great. Uh, I, I'd like to I think that I, I showcase that I'm definitely someone that's here for them in their future that that's going to do really good for this women's division. And so, you know, I hope moving forward that I, I um, will get some more recognition and, and some more promotion moving on. Yeah, it's funny. And listen, I know I'm taking a shot at the UFC by saying this, but it's true. You know, a lot of fighters, when they find the UFC, you know, they, li they like to they like to show their personality a little bit more. You know what I mean? I know you've done that in Invicta. You like to have fun at the weigh-ins. Uh, but the UFC, they've kind of like, you know, dulled it down to the point where like you can't really do a whole lot of creativity in the weigh-ins and or your walkout. And it's just kind of like you just kind of walk to the cage or you just kind of walk out for your way in. But I know you've always kind of had creativity and fun with your weigh-in outfits, things like that. And also you had fun with the, the intro on uh, Saturday night. <laughs> you had, you had yes. quite the intro. Did you have fun with that? Like being able to do that again and actually be able to kind of like put on a show? Oh, my God. I'm a trendsetter. 100 percent. No other female in bare knuckle has put on a performance from the way ends until the end of the fight, like I have. And that's who I am. That, that's just who I am. I have a phenomenal team behind me. My aunt handmade my, my way in outfit. She's always kind of handmade and, and finds people to help her make my way in outfits. And so real, really it's her creativity. I, I give her an idea of what I like, or I'll give her colors and she runs with it and she makes my way in. She makes my fight outfits. I mean, I had on I had on some custom shoes from the shoe surgeon, which are they were thirty five hundred dollars shoes that I fought in. Like it was just it was such a great experience. And and the shoe surgeon is like a leader in in, in sneakers and kicks. So I mean, from the kicks to to the the skirt, which was incredibly, it was a leather skirt. It was made, and then my top was see through mesh. Like it was all it was all of a little bit of me in there. And yes, I love that part. I am a performer. I'm not just an athlete. I, I love to shine and and um, you saw that in my weigh-ins and then I had dancers, you know, which was awesome for me because I was like, my aunt's like, oh man, you got to do this and do that. And I'm like, I'm not doing anything, Thea. I'm walking to this fight and I'm fighting. And so my aunt figured a way to, to kind of show that. And then we played like a very famous song from Chicago. So it was like, and I had these beautiful girls up there twerking. It was just perfect. It was such a great, from start to finish, a great experience. And I would say for me and, and how, uh, how many fights I've had with, with Invicta, I was able to do some of this. Um, this was my best, uh, display of, of who I am yet, as far as the outfits go and the dancers and then the, the, the performance, um, overall it came together really, really nicely. I've got to ask Pearl, I'm a bit of a sneakerhead myself. Were the, the shoes modeled after Jordan 1s? Was that what you had going on there? Because I swear, I t actually told somebody that I was working with covering the fights on Saturday night, I was like, is Pearl wearing Jordan 1s in the, in the ring right now? <laughs> so Amanda Amanda um, Serrano, she wears Jordans in every one of her fights and so, since she's been a champion. She re wears Jordans when she fights. And I was like, Amanda... Um, can I bring a piece of you in the ring with me? Can I wear Jordans too? You know? And she was like, Oh my God, absolutely. So yes, these were, there were custom Jordan ones. They had every, like they had zebra print, cheetah print. Um, they had their real fur, um, fur everywhere. And they were just a bunch of different furs put together. They were beautifully hand and they were handmade. So yes, it, and the shoe surgeon killed it with these shoes. So I was, I was really excited to wear them and then to be probably the first ever, uh, fighter to wear jordans into the bare knuckle ring yeah i saw him immediately i was like hey are those jordan ones i was like i feel like i, I feel like i recognize those <laughs> shoes right now uh yeah that was awesome that was awesome and also i know 
uh, coming out again. And again, I know it sounds like I'm keep taking shots at the UFC. I promise I'm not. But again, you get to show your person. I know you, you actually get to advertise your website as well, which was different because, again, that's not something you can do in a lot of organizations. Obviously, you can have sponsors and things like that. So it seemed like you were having fun. And listen, at the end of the day, this is a business. You're there to make money. Being able to advertise your own brand, your own website, that's a big deal. Absolutely. And that was I purposely did that. I, I sponsored myself this fight. Um, and made sure that I had my, my website everywhere, Pearl's Paradise. So, uh, yeah, it was really fun. And, and like, I have a brand new logo that's like, it's like a kicking, a silhouette of me kicking with heels on, um, which will be coming out soon with, I'll have some merch with that, but it was fun. And like, I had the socks on, so it was, I had on my own socks, like from start to finish, I had a blast. Um, and so I'm, I'm glad that you saw that. And I really do appreciate that you saw that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not, as you said, financially, it sounds like you're in a good place with that. And obviously, again, this is a business. You got to make money. It sounds like that's also been working out well for you going into BKFC. Yes, it is. My I'm having so much fun on my website. You know, I'll say this. I'm in a, a brand new place in my life. Um, I'm just getting out of a, it's been a year now, a 10 year relationship. So I'm single for the first time in, in over 10 years. And, uh, and like, this is my way. I'm not, I don't have time to, to make friends. I don't have time to hang out and date or any of that. I don't, I'm not interested in that, but I do have a website where I can have fun and, and be myself. I'm, I'm, I love being beautiful. I'm a woman first before I'm a fighter. And, and this is the, my website is where I get to be feminine and, and beautiful and sexy and, and just kind of show another side of me that, that doesn't get shown on my social media. Um, so yeah, I'm having, I'm having a really good, I'm in a good place in my life. I think just not just financially, but spiritually, mentally, physically, I'm, I'm in a really good place and, and I'm enjoying it. Oh, that's awesome. That's amazing to hear. Well, Pearl again, congratulations on an amazing BKFC debut. Uh, I don't know. I know you said you're already back in the gym. Uh, they, yes. they keep a pretty busy schedule. Do you have an idea? Like how soon would you like to fight again? You know, I, I don't know. We have to see how my hands do right now. Um, I can't punch anything. I there's, again, I'm still trying to get the swelling out of my hands and my wrist. And it, so it, it all depends on how soon I can get back to hitting things. Um, but I'm going to work around it. I am training legs and training whatever other areas I can. So, you know, I'm ready. I'm here. I'm, I'm not, I don't want to take time. I'm not here to waste time. I'm, I'm not young. Um, and, uh, I'm in a really good place. Again, I'm, I'm dedicated to living here in Brooklyn and, and focusing solely on my boxing. So this is my time right now to, to do this. So as soon as my hands heal, uh, we'll see, we'll, we'll see what plays out next month with the girls and, and where I fit in, in this, in this whole situation. And yeah, and I, I'll be, I'm ready to go. I love it. Well, Pearl again, congratulations on an amazing debut. I really do mean it when I say, like I said, I've covered a lot of BKFC shows, that was one of the most impressive debuts I've ever seen. And that's, and that's, you know, covering the gambit of all the fighters who've gone there. I was blown away by your performance. So congratulations again on the win. Enjoy a little downtime. Sounds like you're already back in the gym, but you know, get some Brooklyn pizza, something, enjoy a little bit of downtime. Oh my out gosh. There. <laughs> yeah, so I, actually, I've, been to, have... I've been to Brooklyn many times. I got good food in Brooklyn. So I've been, eat, I've definitely been enjoying food, but I actually have some really exciting stuff. I'm going to Puerto Rico Friday morning. I'll be in, in Puerto Rico for the fourth. And then, um, I go straight to Vegas, uh, for my, for my podcast. I have a podcast with UFC fight pass and I'll be in, in Vegas all week for the Connor fight covering it. I've got my first, uh, first live shows with them. So I've got a lot of exciting things happening. That's what keeps me close to MMA and keeps me close to the sport is my podcast and commentating. I'm also commentating. So it, it, it's, um, I get a little bit of downtime and I also obviously will be fitting in a bunch of photo shoots for my website as well. Awesome. Well, again, congratulations on the win. Enjoy all the traveling. Enjoy all the other things you got going on. Obviously, it sounds like you're very, very busy. So uh, have fun <laughs> doing everything you're doing. Thank you so much for taking the time. And hopefully we can catch up again when your next uh, BKFC fight gets scheduled. Yes, my next win. Thank you so much. Have a great day. And again, I appreciate all of your compliments. It, it really means a lot to me. Thank you.